your speaker and your microphone, and I have learned that sometimes that takes doing it a couple of times because it keeps wanting to turn on again. Um, we are participating in a hybrid hearing today, so members uh, are both in person and remote. And if you want to seek recognition and you are remote, please use the raise hand function, and I will recognize members who are here in the committee hearing room. Uh, we have two uh, housekeeping items with uh, approval of minutes for September 2nd, 2021, and October 20th, 2021. And Senator Kiffmeyer moves both sets of minutes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The motion prevails and the minutes are approved. Uh, agenda today is uh, picking up where we left off last week. And as we concluded uh, that hearing, uh, we had uh, two uh, proposals for reports to leave the committee in a conversation about potential compromise and timelines at the last hearing. Uh, as we concluded, I, uh, as chair, said that the next step would be to convene the, a hearing in one week's time to determine if there uh, is a potential compromise that we could reach. And I ask anyone who has a potential compromise to please bring it to this hearing. Uh, I do have something that I'm prepared to hand out on behalf of uh, the administration and the uh, DFL members of the working group, and we'd like to pass that out for a conversation, but I would, uh, just as a way of understanding uh, what might come from that conversation, ask if anyone else is bringing any form of uh, compromise position to, dis to the discussion today. Okay, I'm not seeing that, so I would ask uh, committee staff to distribute this and to post it. Okay, I think everyone has a copy. Uh, I think everyone has a copy uh, of the document that we just distributed. Uh, last time we had a kind of side-by-side, -side, not an official legislative side-by-side, -side, but a kind of side-by-side -side that we went over summarizing the uh, Republican legislative members and then the DFL legislative administration members' uh, positions. The center column now is what we are outlining as a possible compromise. And I just want to run through this, and then if uh, it's helpful, maybe we could have a brief recess for members to have a conversation about it uh, after I run through it. So first of all, uh, the top line minimum hours to qualify. Uh, the Republican side had a 1,200 hour minimum number. Uh, we were at 120 uh, during the uh, period of uh, March 15th to June 30th, 2021, uh, and we are suggesting a possible compromise of 120 hours, but over a shorter duration, so not over as long a period of time, all in the year 2020. Uh, we have dates of employment, uh, which uh, is a little bit more uh, expansive but, uh, than the Republican position, but still uh, less than what was original on our side. Uh, the next line, in person, we all agree that you couldn't telecommute and qualify for these funds. Um, I think this next uh, category, uh, who you had to work in proximity to, uh, the Republican side was COVID patients and residents, which I think is implicit in the uh, sectors that were included. So I don't really think that that is a different position. Um, and uh, the uh, compromise essentially blends the two proposals, as we will see. Uh, in the sectors included, uh, we had a discussion of who those would be on the GOP side, and of course we spent all of our time <laughs> during these hearings talking about all the potential sectors and all the workers who uh, provided services and who could be potentially included. 
what we have done is to separate those into two groups, uh, group one uh, being uh, long-term care and home care, health care and emergency responders and corrections, group two being the balance of those uh, sectors that were included in the DFL proposal uh, that don't uh, fit into uh, group one. Uh, we have uh, on geographic restriction, uh, we would propose that the work had to be performed in Minnesota versus uh, where an individual lived and potentially qualifying other places. Uh, we have no income limit on the GOP side and we are continuing to propose um, a uh, income limit for uh, qualification for the fund but making uh, that limit larger if you are a direct patient care provider for COVID. Uh, on we have an unemployment exclusion, um, and the GOP plan would essentially say that if you received a month of unemployment, you would not be included. Uh, we started with a 20-week exclusion, and um, in the compromised version, we're trying to move somewhere in between at 13 weeks. Flipping the page, for those of you with the paper application, we all agree that there should be a worker application. Uh, the application period, we're willing to go to the Republican proposal of 30 days. Uh, we, are, we do include um, outreach and education and uh, posting requirements. That would be something we would want to continue to require and some ap and application support so that we're reaching the workers who could potentially qualify. And um, we all agree that the Funding should for the administrative costs should be outside of the $250 million fund. Uh, we continue to maintain that there should be, that the agency should not be required to fund all of that out of their existing uh, service requirements. Payments, this is really kind of where the uh, grouping comes together. I wanted to go through all those details, but really this is the kind of heart of the issue. Um, what we are proposing uh, is that the 667,000 workers in the DFL proposal be broken out into group one, which is the 160,000 uh, workers that the Republicans propose, leaving a balance of 500,000 workers for group two. Uh, we are creating a system where every worker would qualify for $300, and the uh, uh, workers in group one would receive additional payment uh, of an amount that we estimate to be another $312. So it roughly is $300 and $600. Uh, we do this by saying that when you get all the applications that are coming in for all the workers and everyone has received $300, if you also qualify for group one, the balance of the 250 million that remains will go to you. And that's what we estimate will be $612. It could be more, it could be less, but we think this is a conservative estimate. Uh, we all agree that the payment date should be after the application is verified. And I think we are uh, largely agreed on the payment exclusions. I think we have not spent a lot of time talking about that, but I don't think there's huge disagreement there. So this, this is what we are proposing as a middle ground. We are very cognizant of the fact that $250 million does not go as far as it should to cover all of the work and recognize all the people in a meaningful way that we would like to. Uh, we are aware that um, there are other conversations happening uh, at the uh, leadership level about um, uh, emergency powers in Chapter 12 and commissioners and other kinds of issues. And I maintain that this working group has an obligation to try and try and try to come up with a, a fair plan to distribute the $250 million and that we should be able to do that. Um, so we're bringing forward this um, compromise as an effort to get past the logjam that we had last week and to recognize uh, that nobody and no side is going to get everything, but we think this is a very fair uh, middle ground approach to how to distribute this $250 million. Senator Housley, were you seeking recognition? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Sure. Always. Um, <laughs> The, first of all, um, when did you, I haven't heard from anybody in the last week, so I was just wondering when did you put all of this together and then just um, 
bring your compromise position um, to us today. Senator Housley, we've been working all during last week, over the weekend, and during the first two days of this week to try to finalize it. So, uh, and I'd be more than happy to recess for as long as you would like to take a look. Uh, if we needed to reconvene another day, if you think this is a fruitful avenue for conversation, I'd be willing to do that. Um, I just want us to do everything we can to try to find a middle ground. And we, I think, have gone a long ways in this document to get to a position that uh, many people have talked about uh, as a way to bridge this gap. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm just, Housley. thank you. I'm just wondering, um, so we've had a week and again, I hadn't heard from anybody. So I was wondering, you know, had you put anything together and um, we did vote down um, the two plans, your plan and our plan last week. Um, we voted for it, but that got voted down, which actually gave um, some of these workers even more money, $1,200. But when I saw that you had scheduled a press conference today for 1.30, I was kind of shocked. Um, that was scheduled yesterday. So was there, was there really a, an effort um, by the governor and the six DFL members on this committee to come to a compromise? Or was this just, let's just throw this at them in committee and go to a press conference at 1.30? Senator Housley, if we could uh, believe that this is a useful ground for compromise and conversation, we'll cancel, I'll cancel the press conference. The point is to try to get this done. And we were surprised last week by legislation that was thrown at us uh, that we had not, that was purported to be our position, that we hadn't had no role in drafting. Uh, and so rather than just coming back with the same kind of thing, I'm trying to, and I said at the end of the last hearing, if you have a compromise, please bring it to the meeting. That's what we're trying to do. I saw Senator Murphy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I am grateful that we're here and would ask that we not be dissuaded by the year's worth of behavior that we grow accustomed to in this place, uh, one-upsmanship, uh, surprises, um, uh, an effort that positions us politically but doesn't solve the problem. And we, we came into this working group, and I remember saying at the very first one, let's make this different. Let's make this, let's show Minnesotans that with this very contained effort, not should we do frontline worker pay, but how? Right? The, the leaders that negotiated and set the terms for this working group set the terms for the working group. Yeah. We all know this, you know, this is a place where deals are made um, for this $250 million for frontline workers. There was an agreement made on reinsurance. That's already done. Um, that's out the door. Um, we were asked not if we do this, but how we do this. And I'm very sincere in my pursuit of how and that we get this done for frontline workers. And so, we, we did work all weekend over the weekend. Um, after we left that last meeting where we said, let's come back with a compromise, we will come back. Here we are with a compromise, not to surprise you, um, but to kickstart instead what I hope is a fruitful conclusion to this work. And if, if it means recessing to talk it through, we can do that. We've done that many times. You were recessed out in the hall before we even started. It's okay. Um, I remember once at the end of a very hard session uh, caucusing in a hallway because there was no other place to caucus. We had 30 minutes to talk about a bonding bill. I remember then Majority Leader Pepin coming into the hallway and saying, you gotta come back now. It's time to come back to work because we were working our way through. We are accustomed to sometimes working under pressure. We can do that. But the pressure in this moment is whether or not we're going to actually proceed in good faith. So we can recess, talk about this. We can talk together about it. Um, you and your colleagues from the Republican caucus who are seeing it for the first time can recess and talk about it. We can adjourn the meeting and come back and negotiate in between. We have plenty of options. Um, and so I, I think it's really important that we not do the conditioned response, which is they're trying to get us 
They're trying to find their path politically, but instead see this for what it is, which is a bona fide offer at compromise that gets us back to a solution for frontline workers. And I will say, I was asking about this earlier today, about what transpired in the long-term care bill that had a, a proposed $700 for the long-term care workers. It's not far off from here. Um, and so I understand we've talked about lots of different totals, but even during the session as we were working through these issues and didn't find a conclusion for some of the frontline workers, there was an effort uh, led uh, in the Health and Human Services Bill for long-term care workers of $700, not far off from this proposal for those very same workers. So we have tried very hard um, to come up with what is a compromise that represents what we've heard uh, from everybody on the working group, but more importantly, what we've heard about the experiences of Minnesotans over the last 18 months, and really, really ask that you have a look at this for what it is, a real, a real offer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to have this kind of conversation, but I think it's really important to go back to the statute itself. It does not require us to come to consensus. It does not. And matter of fact, the statute actually says that we can put forward up to three proposals to the legislature. So it very specifically anticipated that there would not be consensus and that we could send these proposals to the legislature. I think the most important thing here is to move this on to the legislature where you actually have the negotiating and you have that. And even if we do something today, it's a recommendation to the legislature. There's no guarantee that that's what's gonna happen. There's nothing that says it's gonna be. Um, I see issues with this proposal where we are having uh, a set amount um, for us to do, uh, but I, I just have other things like it. But I think the most important thing is to get this to the legislature. And uh, there are several things here. And, and working together by yourselves and bringing this to us um, right now, uh, I appreciate your offer of time, but I don't have a lot of confidence that more time is going to do it. I think our time best used is to get this to the legislature. So, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm really hoping that maybe Senator Housley's proposal last week, which was to take the two proposals send them to the legislature. I think that is such a valid way to do it and lays it out in front of it for the legislature to decide. So I just, I, that's just how I feel and I, um, I think every time we uh, take another week, we're just delaying the whole process and I think the fastest way is get this over to the legislature. Either with Senator Housley's proposal would be best in my point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kiffmeyer. I also do just want to say that this uh, offer, this compromise offer, is uh, very close to exactly what we've talked about one on one. Um, so there's no surprise in the concept here, and I do think that this could get the job done. So I, what I'd like to do is I, I think it's fair to give a little bit of time to talk it over and see if there's any value in that. So I would like to just propose a fifth. I'm going to. Uh, make a, a call for a 15-minute recess, and if we need a little bit more time after that, we will we can do that. But I think it's here for you and uh, your other committee members and staff to have a conversation, and uh, we'll come back in 15 minutes. Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I don't know if we need a recess um, for us to talk about it, um, but it's. It's a little frustrating, it feels like a little bad faith when we are told that we are being presented with a compromise that has been worked on exclusively by one party over the last week and a half weeks, as you say. Um, it's not a compromise when we're not included in the conversation. And I understand, like you said, you, you may have had um, conversations where you talked about things, but clearly nothing was agreed to in those conversations. Um, so even if these things were discussed, there clearly were not agreements. And so I think there's a little bad faith in presenting it as a compromise when um, all of the parties were not included 
in creating the compromise. That's not really how compromise works. I would also just say it's, um, it's a little frustrating as I look through this quote compromise that as I look through, I sort of made a note of, of where these things fall and the vast majority of the compromise language is pretty close to, um, is pretty close to your original proposals. Um, I, I would also just say that there are pretty significant concerns, you know, when we move the compromise on, for example, um, the unemployment exclusion. You know, we, we in, and in fact, I would say when we initially had these conversations, our thought was that if you received unemployment, you should be excluded entirely. But we understood that certainly there were folks who ran into situations where they had un were unemployed for a short period of time, and um, we didn't want those folks to be excluded entirely. But when we do, when we're talking a 13-week exclusion, uh, you know, there was a, in addition to the state unemployment benefit, weekly benefit, there was an additional $600 from the federal government. I mean, if, if we are talking about, and, and if we're talking about nurses who we understand um, are not at the poverty line, they're not making the minimum unemployment benefit. They're, they're doing reasonably well with their unemployment benefit. I mean, we're talking $1,300 a week for those folks. I mean, we're talking about folks who could have made $17,000 over the course of those 13 weeks, which doesn't really fit the, um, the spirit of that exclusion. I don't think that that fits the spirit of that exclusion. Um, I think... I think the good news is that, once again, as we look through this list, I think there's more that we agree on than that we don't agree on. I think we've felt that for a long time. But um, those, those details don't get hammered out with just one side in a room creating, quote, the, the compromise. That happens when we have the parties together hammering out that compromise. And that's not what we are seeing in front of us. Um, so. I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that we need a recess to discuss it. I, I mean, we're certainly not going to, un unless, unless you are prepared to make pretty significant movement, um, and perhaps you are, in which case we should do that. If you are prepared to make pretty significant movement on, a lot, on some of this stuff, because um, there is a lot that we do agree on. And, and even things that, you know, um, are the Democrat position that we're not at all um, the Republican position, but are, are put in the compromise. I think there's quite a few things on here that we would agree with. We would 100% agree with your position on those things, and we would be comfortable with those things. Uh, but un unless you're prepared to make significant movement, I don't, I don't know why we would need to recess to talk about it amongst ourselves. Representative Frazier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Chair, thank you for laying out the proposal um, as thoroughly as you did. I, I think it's a reasonable one. It is a compromise, and it is a proposed compromise. So it's not uh, one side coming together and coming up with an agreement that all sides are going to agree to. It is a proposal to the other side asking you to engage with us in this conversation and this negotiation to come to an agreement. I, I don't. Every negotiation I've been in, that's the way negotiations work. One side makes an offer, another side makes a counteroffer. You have these conversations and you hopefully come to an agreement. Um, it, is, it was our hope that we would have a press conference together afterwards saying that we've come to an agreement. For all the workers, the thousands of workers that have been waiting for us to come to an agreement, we've actually done the work and we've come to an agreement. I'm, I'm very frustrated right now because it seems like um, I'm hearing this one side say they don't want to engage in this negotiated process publicly to come to an agreement. That's very frustrating. We've got thousands of workers that are waiting on us to do the right thing, to come together and make this happen. And I will, I will say that even though the legislation doesn't require us to come to an agreement, that is what these workers deserve. They deserve us to give a thousand percent effort to try to come to an agreement. And I think we need to do that. We've had several meetings. We continue to say how much we agree on things, but I am seeing our side make an offer to make movement toward you all. What I am not hearing from my GOP colleagues is an offer to move towards us. 
and we're waiting for that. That is why we want to do the recess. But if you want to just have an open discussion about moving towards us, I welcome that conversation. Thousands of workers that have been, at this point, in your proposal, excluded, welcome the conversation to see if they will be included, to be recognized financially for the work that they've done in the pandemic in the beginning, and that they continue to do now. They all are watching, and they're waiting. And we're waiting to, to come to an agreement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, go back to Senator Housley, and then we'll kind of round out this discussion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just came from uh, an HHS hearing where um, we were learning about and hearing uh, the huge shortage in the workforce that we have, and especially in our senior care. Um, and we've heard the stories over and over in this committee, but they are losing 2,000 workers, workers every month um, that are just leaving the workforce in our long-term care facilities and our assisted living and nursing homes. Uh, and when they first proposed the $700, that was at the very beginning of COVID. It is now 14 months later since they proposed the $700, and they are still in the, in the middle of this. And 23,000 jobs are still open, and they're closing the doors. They're turning people away. They're not taking any new residents because they don't have the staff. Um, so you know, you know where we stand on this, and we've, we've uh, beaten it uh, to a pulp here. Um, but I, I propose, Mr. Chair, that there are three proposals right here on this paper. Why don't uh, I, I'd like to make the motion to pass all three on to the legislature. Uh, well, Rep. Senator Housley, unfortunately, we don't have uh, legislative language for all three. So I don't think that that fits with our mission. Um, and I do think that I heard uh, Representative New Brindley uh, talk about a lot that we agree on, uh, address the, the difference on the unemployment side. I'm going to put aside the question of bad faith uh, because I don't think that's a worthwhile conversation to have. Um, and I would like to... Uh, I'm going to take a 15-minute recess. I hear you saying we don't need it, but I still think it would be worthwhile to see if this working group for one last time can look at the question of finding a compromise and getting our mission completed. So we're going to take a recess. Mr. Every Chair, member has been heard from. Just before just the a, recess. Senator, just a, every member has been heard from. Uh, every legislative member mm -hmm. has been heard from. Uh, the commissioners, understandably, uh, don't typically engage in this kind of uh, of conversation at the legislature. So I think we're ready for a brief recess, and then we'll come back and see where we go from there. S Senator Kiffmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to clarify that in the last week, there was language for the Republican proposal and the Democrat proposal. That is still there. We still have that, which is on, on two of these. We don't need them to be combined to make a third. We still have those. And so I think we do have language that would enable us to move forward. I just wanted to clarify that before we took the break. And Senator Kiffmeyer, that was not language that we drafted for our proposal, but I take your point. We are going to be in recess until uh, 1.50. Recording stopped.
committee will return to order. Um, so I guess the question before us is whether uh, further conversation about compromise language is uh, in uh, useful activity or whether we should uh, go back to the GOP proposal from last week and send out two separate reports. Um, I know that the DFL members and the administration are prepared to continue this conversation. Um, and I guess my question goes then to you, Senator Housley, what your position is. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I would love to pass out the two proposals that um, were voted down last week. That would be ideal. Um, that is where I think our, our group is at. Um, I'm just wondering, so with the, the compromise that you brought today, um, you didn't bring any language. So, like, we did the work last week to bring language, and then we brought language for your proposal, but now you have the possible compromise, but no language with it, so there's nothing that we can really do except drag this out another week and another week. And I, every week we drag this out is another week that these frontline workers are not getting their money. So, and as Commissioner Robertson said, it's going to take her three months to get these system in place to get the checks out. So every week we keep delaying this um, is one more week that the money doesn't get into the hands of the workers. So I would like to get something out here today to the legislature so they can work it out there. So if, if sure, I'll take, I would love to do the two proposals that we did last week, um, SC 8708-4 and SC 8760. Well, let's just so we could have language drafted for a compromise in very short order. That is something that we easily could do. And so uh, I'm hearing that more conversation about the concept that we've laid out is not something uh, that is going to be productive for us. I, could something get out of this committee today? Is there language how quick? Senator Housley, I, here's what I'm going to do. I'd like to make a motion that the compromise language that we put together, uh, we we're going to, by resolution, direct staff to draft legislation in bill form that represents this option, and it be the recommendation of the working group subject to final approval of the language, and we do that. Today is Wednesday. We would have a meeting Monday to reconvene and pass this out. That's my motion. Um, Mr. Chair, um, so you would get that to the reviser, what you have in the compromise, um, and we would get that out of here with a vote, get the language back. So it's a gentleman's agreement that this is the language that we can just get to the legislature so the governor can call us into special session and have the conversation there. Because this is not the plan that I support. Um, I, am, I am in the plan A that we've discussed before, but if it will get this to the legislature, I'm willing to vote for it just to get it out of this frontline worker committee and have the governor call us into a special session. Okay, and so thank you, Senator Housley. Just to be clear on the motion, it is to direct uh, staff to draft legislation reflecting the potential compromise here. We will finalize it to jointly to show, make sure that it, rec it follows this recommendation, and we would reconvene Monday to uh, vote it out and send it to the, to the whole legislature. Discussion, further discussion to that motion. Senator Kiffmeyer. Yes, Mr. Chair, I thought I heard you say something that that if this compromise did not pass, that we would use um, Senator Housley's motion where we actually have language that we could act on today. I would much prefer, it's much cleaner to take the language which was already drafted, you've had it for a week, and if we took those two languages and sent those two proposals to the legislature and then let the legislature do the work of the compromising. So I would much rather have Senator Housley's motion of those two proposals to go to the legislature. And um, matter of fact, I would like to make a motion to do just that. Well, we have a motion before Senator Kiffmeyer. So it's on this middle ground be drafted, and we will, uh, for Monday, to have this committee send it out as in final form. So, Mr. Chair, you're saying if this does not pass, then we would consider the Housley two proposals? Uh, Senator Kiffmeyer, if this motion did not pass, then a motion to send two proposals would be in order. Senator, or Representative New Brindley. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a point. Um, you know, Senator Housley tried to make a motion before we recessed uh, to move all of these proposals forward, and we were told that she couldn't do that. You, you, you would not allow her to make that motion because there was no language. However, now we are making a motion, again with no language, to direct language. I, I'm not sure why we couldn't have honored her original motion mm -hmm. the same way. Mm -hmm. Agree. Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Rep. Housley. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good point, Representative New. It, it's true. I did make the motion to pass all three of these out. Two of them we have language for already. The other one we don't. We could pass this out, again, on the gentleman's agreement that the third compromise language will come back on Monday. And then we can reconvene and vote on that language. But getting all three of these out would be the motion that I made earlier. Uh, Senator Housley, uh, the motion is to do two. Or, I'm sorry, it's to do one, and it's to draft language and have it be prepared for a Monday hearing where we could actually vote out legislative language. I don't think that we can close this committee down and say we've sent a report to the legislature unless it's actual legislative language. So the motion before us is on this compromise language, and we can do it. Representative New Brindley, I can't tell if that's a desire to seek recognition. We're discussing the motion. Yeah, I, I, I suppose I'll just reiterate the point. You, you were unwilling to recognize Senator Housley's motion to move forward because there was no language, but now you are making a motion still without language to, to direct writing language. Well, there's no reason that we could not have done that with her motion. Um, and it's just, it's a little disappointing that we were unwilling to recognize her motion and now we are making effectively the same motion, but only with, with your proposal. I, it's, it's, just, it's just not the right thing to do. Representative New Brindley, the motion is to direct staff to draft legislative language reflecting the middle ground position that we offered today. Uh, that is the motion in front of us. Motions that follow, we can take up next. Mr. Chair, thank you, New thank Brindley. you, Mr. Chair. Just, just to be clear, the motion is is to direct staff to uh, develop language on the Democrat proposal, on the Democrat compromise <laughs> language, not on not on middle ground, not on compromise language. It is on the the language that that you guys have come up with. Senator Housley. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm just wondering why we need to vote on this um, when we don't have the language, when we have to vote again already on Monday. Well, Senator Housley, I'm hearing that we don't have any basis for expecting compromise. Uh, and I think that if this motion uh, does not prevail, um, Although you did indicate maybe, and so did Representative New Brindley earlier, um, if this motion doesn't prevail, then I would expect that we will move, go on to your motion or a version of your motion to send two proposals out, and um, we will be done. So I want to wrap up this piece of business to make sure that we're, there is no basis for further agreement, uh, and then be done. So the motion is in f before us. I think that a roll call has to be taken because uh, we need to record the number of votes has to be seven in order for it to be the recommendation of the working group, and I think it's fair. So the motion is to direct staff to direct uh, compromise language that can be presented to this committee on Monday. Chair votes aye. Senator Housley. No. Commissioner Doty. Yes. Representative Frazier. Aye. Commissioner Grove. Aye. Senator Kiffmeyer. No. Senator Murphy. Aye. Representative New Brindley? No. Commissioner Robertson? Aye. There are not seven votes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Representative. I'm sorry, Senator Housley, for correcting my camera. There are not seven votes uh, that this would move forward in this manner, and so the motion does not prevail. Senator Housley. Mr. Chair, I would like to make the motion to pass um, all three proposals on this uh, piece of paper that we have in front of us, um, pending language for uh, the middle one, the possible compromise, uh, and then we can pass um, 
the two that I've said that we had here last time, 8708 and 8760, and then also the language that you will be getting on Monday. Uh, Senator Housley, I uh, am going to make a motion to amend your motion <laughs> uh, because we have language that reflects our, that we drafted that actually reflects our position so that we're not basing it off of GOP language. So we will have two sets of bills ready to go out of this hearing today. Uh, Mr. Chair, then Senator Housley. Thank you. I will um, amend my motion to be, now that we have language for all three, um, let's just pass all three out. Senator Housley, we only have language for two. Oh, this is yours. Your. Yes. Okay, got yep. it. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just as a point of clarification for Senator Housley, um, in addition to the Republican and position and the Democrat position, um, were, you, were you also directing to have language written for, for a third position or just to pass the two? Um, Mr. Chair. Senator Housley. Thank you. Uh, Representative Brindley. Uh, Mr. Chair, so this language right here is what you have in the third. This is language that we tried to do last time for you, but this is... It, um, Senator Housley, yes. This is okay. not this, this is, is not this the is potential compromise that we propose. Okay. This is our position. This is a majority report, I believe, based on the uh, conversations we've had with... Uh, six mm -hmm. members, mm -hmm. and it's my understanding that you have a, a position from three members, which is be the minority report, and you have that uh, language as well. I think it was distributed last week. Mr. Chair. Senator Housley. Yes, that is true, so I would um, make that motion to pass those two out. We won't do the possible compromise. So the motion before us is that uh, SW087, and do you have a notation for the other that you? Um, yeah, eight seven. Yeah, okay. it's eight seven zero oh, eight. Okay, so I'll restate your motion as I as the chair understands it, Senator or Senator Housley. The motion is to send S W zero eight seven and S C eight seven zero eight dash four as the uh, two reports from this working group. Yes, Mr. Chair. Discussion of the motion. Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I, if uh, Senator Housley is, is open to it, I, I would like to amend actually to direct language to be written for compromise language as well, so we have a jumping off point for that as well. Um, I, I, I do think it's a bad idea to, to get rid of, um, as, as you said, there were many things that you discussed with Senator Housley initially, and, and as I said in my comments earlier, there are certainly things on here that the Republicans would agree to. Um, and so it seems like we should direct language to be written for a possible compromise as well, so we've got that to work off of as, as well. Representative New Brindley, we had that motion to, to draft that language and continue the path of compromise. I think there is no shortage of ability to look for middle ground. Uh, clearly, we have taken a, uh, offered, made an offer here today. Uh, this sense of the working group, I think, is that that con my understanding is that there's no further point to have that conversation in this forum. I think that having made this proposal, uh, other members of the legislature, as Senator Kiffmeyer has maintained, would be able to continue to have this conversation. I believe that Senator Miller and Speaker Hortman are still in conversation with each other. So um, I don't think, it, and we, I don't intend to call another hearing of this working group once we've sent out two sets of legislative language. So I don't think adding uh, a middle position without legislative language serves the purpose. And so I would suggest that that not be the right approach. But there is no reason why we couldn't continue to talk and see if we can find compromise in another forum. Representative New Brindley. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I I agree, and I and I hope that that uh, we do still continue to talk. It it just seemed like um, we should have all of these things ready to go. But if that is not the will of the committee today, that's not the will of the committee. Mr. Chair. Senator Kiffmeyer. Yeah, I'm just puzzled as to why, since we can put three proposals forward. Two have language, the middle one does not. 
I don't understand the resistance to including all three. Well, Senator Kiffmeyer, we have positions that you uh, brought forward, your side brought forward last mm -hmm. week. We did not want to call it quits, and we, I asked everyone here to come to this meeting with a compromise if you have one. We brought one. It was not uh, acceptable for further discussion. I heard uh, that you reiterated the desire in this forum. Uh, I heard that you reiterated a desire to move forward with proposals. We have two sets of legislative language. We have a, we have a motion in front of us, and uh, we're just we're discussing that motion to send out two proposals. One reflects the language you drafted last week, and the other reflects our ability to draft our own language for our own bill. So we're basically where we were last week. Our effort at having a compromise in this in this forum uh, not being successful. Mr. Chair. Senator Housley. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's not that we're not willing to discuss the possible compromise. You brought language for the third column, that's your position, but you didn't bring language for the middle one. So uh, it's not that the, we don't want to discuss it. We just don't have the language, and we're fine with passing through all three with the language that would be coming on Monday for the middle. Senator Housley, I guess I'm confused <laughs> because we had a motion to draft language as a basis for further discussion and compromise. That was defeated. Then we have a motion to bring two proposals forward, which is your motion. And I'm saying that that is, the con that, that is where we are, and we should just move forward, because we've already mm -hmm. tried to do the middle ground. And so if you would like to withdraw your motion and make a counter offer, we are very open to hearing what that would be. Mr. Representative Chair. New Brindley and then Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I'm a little uncomfortable with how things are being framed right now. We keep hearing from the chair that, that this language was not acceptable for further discussion. Well, that's not true. We, we've never said that. And in fact, Senator Housley initially tried to make a motion here to move mm -hmm. all three forward. And Mr. Chair, you changed that motion so it would just be the two proposals. Senator Housley wanted to move all three forward from the beginning. And we do think that's a good idea. We don't think that we should uh, dismiss out of hand the compromises that we have made and, and the points um, of agreement that we do have. We shouldn't dismiss those out of hand. We should move all three of these forward. And to be clear, again, that was Senator Housley's initial motion, and Mr. Chair, you modified that motion to only do the two, not Senator Housley. Just to, uh, Senator Kiffmeyer, go ahead. But I do have the statute in front of me that I could read that might help clarify. But go ahead, Senator Kiffmeyer. Go ahead and read the statute. I'll wait. Okay. The working group must submit proposed legislative language implementing its recommendations to the governor, the speaker of the house, and the Senate majority leader by September 6th. That's passed. For the working group to adopt a recommendation, seven of nine members must vote to approve it. If seven of nine members do not vote a single recommendation, then the working group may present not more than three drafts of legislation implementing potential options. So it says it has to be legislative language in order to move forward. If we do not want this working group to continue to work towards compromise here, and there is a sense of urgency to get something to the legislature, which is what I understand the position of the Republican members is, then we have to move forward with the legislative language we have. And, we, and I heard that uh, that should happen today. So the only way we can do that is with the two sets of bills we have in front of us. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm gonna reiterate again, though. The original motion by Senator Housley was to take all three of these proposals. And it is certainly doable in regards to, we have language for two of them, to get the language for the third and then move forward on that. I mean, you have to remember, we're all legislators here. We are gonna be involved in the ongoing negotiations, especially you as the majority leader. So certainly, all of us will continue to work and have this discussion. It's a matter of the language that we can have that helps the legislature to see the recommendations of a proposal. So I would go back, Senator Housley, I don't know, uh, to your original motion to take all three. If we need to wait for some drafting for the middle proposal, then let's wait for that drafting of that language. Uh, we have the other two, we can get the third, and uh, we can pass all three of the language on to the legislature. 
That is, that is as doable as anything else that has been mentioned here. Senator Kiffmeyer, if we aren't going to be negotiating a third option, there is no point in drafting language. If this working group is not going to be working towards a compromise, then there is no point in drafting that in bill form. Well, and Mr. your own words within the last hour were that we can't wait and we have to get this to the full legislature for them mm -hmm. to determine it. So we've got two draft pieces of legislation in front of us. The motion has been made. Uh, we've had robust discussion and we're going to proceed to a vote of the working group on whether we should move those two draft pieces of draft legislation to the legislature since we cannot reach seven votes on any one. Well, Mr. Chair, it does not say, it says proposals, up to three proposals. It doesn't say a compromise, doesn't say an agreement, up to three proposals. We have three in front of us here right now that we can send off to the legislature. What we need is some language for the middle one, but the other two are there. We're that close. And one of your original motions was to delay until Monday, get the language drafted, and then have all three in front of us. Senator Kiffmeyer, my motion was that we would Was move just the middle one. Yes. Exactly. And yes. that we would be moving forward on the basis of a compromise pathway. And you cannot have a compromise path and uh, two alternative competing proposals it's, path at the same time. It's three proposals. There's nothing that says that, that we can't have these three proposals. You want to call it an agreement, a compromise, or whatever. It was a proposal Statutory that's been rejected. language says proposals. Sorry for interrupting you. Senator Kiffmeyer, it was a proposal that's been rejected for further discussion. The motion is in front of us that we send. Mr. Uh, Chair. Representative New Brindley, I was about to restate the motion and call for a vote. I'll give you one last mm -hmm. chance. Uh, Senator Murphy, did you have your hand up too? No? Okay. I, okay. Thank Person you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to be very clear on, on what these motions were, though, um, because the, the, the earlier motion would have, would have created a position coming out of this committee that supported that middle position period. And we weren't prepared to do that. But what we do want to do is move forward with all three. And we don't want to, we don't certainly want to dismiss the agreement and the compromises that we have already come to. And so I know that right now we are preparing for press conferences and how we're going to message this to the public, but that's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do here is to acknowledge that we have differences, but we also have a great deal of agreement. And we shouldn't throw away the agreement just because we are not all ready to agree with this exact language right now and send it to the legislature. Set. Representative New Brindley, if you have a counter offer, I am open to it. Representative Frazier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm, I'm confused now because I'm, I, I mean, it, it seemed clear to me that um, our colleagues on the GOP side rejected this counter proposal that we offered here. And now it sounds as if you want to accept this compromise. It's not a compromise. Oh, yeah. Well, it is, an, it is an offered compromise, and it sounds clear to me that you rejected that compromise. But now as we're going to vote to move two proposals forward, now there is some sense that you don't want to be seen as not compromising. You can either negotiate and compromise, or you cannot negotiate and compromise. You don't get to have it both ways. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, um, I, um, earlier, uh, when we came into this meeting, and, and frankly, at the last meeting, I had expected that we would uh, enter into a negotiation in this room, um, like we do at the end of the session, that we would find a way forward between the things where we disagree and actually get our work done. The proposal that we brought today, it's a com compromise proposal, was meant to engage that negotiation. Um, people around this place would say, don't bring a proposal like that, you're negotiating against yourself. For frontline workers to get this work done, in my evaluation of where we're at, it was important that we brought something forward that represented a step towards you to kickstart a negotiation. And while I appreciate now that uh, there's some interest in this compromise proposal, the interest in voting for it does not move us toward a compromise solution. 
all it does is say, well, in this one too. And as Senator Kiffmeyer said earlier, um, in the end, it's the legislature that is going to have to make these decisions. And the argument that we heard last week about advancing two proposals, a majority report and a minority report, which is the motion in front of us now, is to say, here's a majority report, here's a minority report, a legislature, you figure it out. I have, I have a lot of... I have a lot of concern about that, but that's where we're at. Uh, and so I think that it makes sense given where we're at, the fact that this committee did reject not only the, the compromise proposal, but is rejecting any effort to negotiate that we should just proceed to this vote um, and recognize that uh, because of the way this committee was constructed, giving um, are requiring us to have seven votes to move anything forward, that we have not earned those seven votes for anything except for maybe these majority reports and this minority report. And Senator Kiffmeyer is shining a light on the fact that this is going to have to go to the legislature. And I guess that's where we're at. But I think we should vote. I don't, I don't think it matters um, if that third report is a part of it. And if you like it a lot, um, we can take it up when we get into the legislature, and I sure hope that there's work done between now and then. Um, that would be that would be important work. Um, that's the negotiation I've been waiting for. That's the negotiation I've been preparing for, has yet to happen. Um, so I think we should proceed to the vote, Mr. Chair. Senator Housley. Mr. Chair, I just want to make it very clear: um, we did not reject any uh, possible compromise that. The motion has been changed a few times through this, so to pin us to say that we rejected any possible compromise, we did not reject anything. We are asking that all three be proposed to the legislature and, and wait on the possible compromise language. Senator Housley, if this working group doesn't send a compromise, then the working group has not made the compromise needed to get it to the legislature. We will send proposals. That's what I'm hearing. Um, I had hoped that we could get this work done here. I don't think it's going to be e any easier for anyone else to reach this same agreement. We've been sitting here and listening to workers. We've been studying the challenges. And I suspect that in the end, uh, there will be some conversation involving you and me and Senator Miller and Speaker Hortman and other members of this working group and the administration that will get somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, the direction that we propose today. I think it's too bad we can't do it. Um, and I mean, honestly, if the frontline workers performed uh, like this legislature has performed in the last six months, we would be in much worse shape in this state. And we have an obligation to try to reach a compromise. We brought it forward as a way to start a conversation. We have been told repeatedly, no, let's just send out multiple choices. And if we're going to send out multiple choices, then they're going to reflect our true positions going forward. So that's the, the motion in front of us uh, to send, uh, I have to make sure that I get this right, to send SW087 and SC8708-4 as the two proposals for the uh, legislature to consider. Representative Frazier. Mr. Uh, quick, Mr. Chair, could you identify which one is the minority report and which one is the majority report, just for the record, please? It's my understanding that SW087 is the report of at least six members, so it would be the majority report. Mr. Chair. Senator Housley. I mean, I, I wish I could hit rewind here on the Zoom, but I'm 99% sure I made the motion to advance all three proposals. And then it was changed to now we're just advancing two. So I, I Sir Housley, I, re I we had a conversation about this. Uh, I noted that the legislation requires written language, and then you said uh, that you would want to move two, and I restated that as your as if that is what you intended, and I'm restating it again what I said earlier. So that's the motion that is currently before us. It is your motion, Senator Housley. Mr. Chair, what I heard was you're saying, Senator Housley, I'm going to amend your motion. I was going to say that I, I said that I would move to amend it. 
and then we had a conversation. But and there was then, no vote on that amending, so it is not amended. We have the original motion, which is Senator Housley's, which is all three proposals. Senator Housley stated that she was moved, that she was changing her amendment to two. So why don't we just do it in a simple manner? I will make a motion to satisfy. Um, well, it's Senator Housley. What would you like to do with your motion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to make a motion to move all three proposals with the gentleman's agreement that we will get compromise language on Monday for the middle proposal. Senator Housley, I, uh, the motion is in front of us. I don't think that that is consistent with the state legislation. I will not support it. Senator Fra Representative Frazier, were you seeking recognition? No. Okay. The clerk will take the roll. The chair votes no. Senator Housley. Aye. Commissioner Doty. No. Representative Frazier? No. Commissioner Grove? No. Senator Kiffmeyer? Aye. Senator Murphy? No. Representative New Brindley? Aye. Commissioner Robertson? No. Uh, vote of three to six, the motion does not prevail. The chair moves. that SW087 be moved as the majority report and SC8708-4 be moved as the minority report uh, to the legislature for consideration uh, as legislative language consistent with the statute. Any discussion to that motion? Seeing none, uh, the clerk will take the roll. The chair votes aye. Senator Housley. Aye. Commissioner Doty. Commissioner Doty? Aye. Re Representative Frazier? Aye. Commissioner Grove? Aye. Senator Kiffmeyer? Aye. Senator Murphy? Aye. Representative New Brindley? Mr. Chair, can I clarify? Is this just moving the one set language, not both of them right now? Uh, Representative New Brindley, the motion is. Moving both, one is the majority report, one is the minority report. No. What was it? Commissioner Robertson? Aye. There being eight ayes and one no, the motion prevails, and the working group uh, sends those two reports to the legislature, and we are adjourned. Recording stopped.